Hey, all right, all right, all right. Another episode of Grillo's Aftershock XL on the Aftershock XL Network. Coming live from my apartment in Hell's Kitchen. Um, got some big announcements coming up uh, soon. We're working on some things where uh, there's going to be changes and very positive, awesome changes, exciting changes, adding new shows, adding new possibilities of you interacting with some of your favorite guests that come on here. Um, we're working on things soon to be announced. And uh, I'm very excited. There's a big big week for shows this week. Uh, we had Vinny Pastore on uh, yesterday. I interviewed Stuttering John. And basically, uh, we got Louis Lombardi today. But today, I'm, I'm kind of, well, and, and Ta, I, you're, you're, he's waiting in the wings. And I just want to make sure when I go through this that it's going to be a graphic show, but done tastefully. Um, we're going to get into uh, a topic of uh, the adult industry, the adult film industry, and I'll give a little background. Uh, you know, listen, I'm a heterosexual man, and um, as everybody sure has their own little private things that go down when they're home alone and they're feeling a little randy, little uh, feeling a little excited down below, and you got to take care of yourself. Uh, part of uh, what ha you know goes down is you know there's there's the adult movie industry. There's there's different ways that you can safely scratch that itch and not have to, you know, hurt somebody if you're alone and you want to enjoy yourself. So I'm trying my best to, you know, uh, my mom is not allowed to watch this show, that's for sure. But um, part of, you know, uh, the adult film industry back when I was, uh, you know, a lot younger, was it's a lot different than it was now. And there was a core stable group of, you know, performers um, and a part of the, uh, and it was a very lucky time for these performers because, uh, there really wasn't a, a, a big competition out there. It was kind of like a hardcore five and, um, that being, you know, uh, Randy West and Peter North, Ron Jeremy and, uh, Tom Byron. Um, and both of them were all part of my, uh, my discreet, my, my discreet little, um, moments alone. Not that, and I'm, again, I'm heterosexual, but they were in like every scene, with every hot girl, and on the on the phone right now, um, we're not going to get an image, but uh, we'll have an image uh, up when it's it's time to come. But uh, one of the actors that was part of my uh, uh, discretion or discreet uh, moments alone was Tom Byron, and he's on the phone right now. How you doing, Steve? Uh, nice to talk to you, Tom. Uh, always fun to, uh, you know. I guess I kind of looked up to you guys. You guys were just, uh, you know, you you guys were the the top of the top of the line. You were top shelf uh, actors. We were the main crew. Yeah, the main crew. And uh, I, you know, I have a lot of questions about how you got into it and everything like that. But um, one of the main reasons uh, why I wanted you to come on today, and we've discussed this, is um, uh, the current situation with uh, probably the, the most notorious because, uh, you know, you, you and Randy and, and Peter were all, like, pretty handsome. You guys were handsome guys. Um, Ron Jeremy was sort of an odd-looking man. Um, and sort of he wasn't exactly in shape and... I guess he did have a pretty uh, interesting penis. Um, this was made him famous. Yeah, so, um, 30 years ago, maybe. Yeah, uh, but he sort of gained notoriety through his bizarre look and his um, and his large member, I guess. Um, I don't know exactly what, you know, how that tails out, but he became a star and he uh, is now in jail for 20 counts of rape. And um, I, I have some questions like, you know, it, was it known that he was a rapist? Like, was that was there people like was it that was it a, something that nobody really spoke about, but it was happening and no one they let it happen? Well, let me tell you this, Ron. He wasn't really well regarded in, in the industry. I mean, you know, he he made a lot of he he was a relentless self promoter, and he got himself over you know in the mainstream by sort of being just this. You know this oddity this you know this clown but you know within the industry you know girls didn't want to work with him you know what i'll tell you a story the first time <clears throat> i ever really encountered ron was behind the seven seas nightclub back in i think it was 83 and the boyfriend of a, a porn actress named julia pardon uh confronted him in the parking lot and was 
him and his friend were about to kick Ron's ass because, according to him, Ron had raped Julia Parton. It was his 1983. And I kind of hung, hung around to sort of, you know, see what was going to happen and to sort of have Ron back, you know, because I was brand new in the business, you know, and Ron was, you know, he, he had some stature back then. Uh, but basically, I, I, I saw Ron basically talk his way out of an ass kicking. Because he's not exactly someone that's going to get into a fight and win. Well, no, Ron. I you know I think I think Ron had some like like training, some fight fighting training. Really, back in the day, yeah. He was in a movie called Raw Talent where he actually had a he had a karate scene with Jerry Butler. I like to dig that and, up, and he was doing like high kicks and stuff. Yeah. So so I don't uh, you know I I was at the Rainbow with Ron one night, and they, I was standing and we was in the middle of a conversation. And a woman literally just came in between us, like that I wasn't even there. And I heard the whole conversation and she said, Ron, my husband said, it's okay, can we go in the bathroom? And I'm not I'm, I'm not saying what she said. She, can I do something to you in the bathroom? And mm -hmm. Ron was like, you wanna do that to the bathroom now? And she goes, right now. And then they just literally left and went to the bathroom. So uh, my theory, and that, that, not my theory is, I'm just curious, like someone, like like you and Ron, who've been in that position because everybody knows you, know to Ronnie because you, you know what you're doing in the bedroom. Um, and, you know, and someone like Ron, especially now when he's older and like really odd looking, um, do they do, do? Are you drunk? And did you wake up the next day and go, "Oh shit, what did I do?" I'm just gonna say he raped me. Is there situations like that where like people do it and then they regret it? You know, possibly. I mean, there's all kinds of you know girls out there on the on the strip that, you know, if anyone has any kind of celebrity whatsoever, they, they throw themselves at them. Yeah. You know, uh, me, I, I would do, I really wasn't into that scene. I, you know, I, you know, I did my job. I showed up on set, did my job and went home. So now I, what, what age did you start and how did you get involved? I was, uh, 21 years old and I got started through, uh, Jim South, the World Modeling Agency, who recently passed away. Okay. Uh, he was and, a friend of yours. I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah. No, he was a great guy. Um, and, well, basically, I mean, I, I when I was 15 years old, I knew what I wanted to do with my life. You knew that you wanted to get into the adult film industry? Yes. Right? I now, what, 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 what did you just, it's just because what you, you had a pretty nice uh, penis and uh, girls were attracted yeah, to you and you, you were good at what you did? The timeline, I mean, it was the 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 seventies, yeah, you know? and that that's when the you know the porn industry was just kind of coming into being, and I was like, that's the best, that's the greatest thing in in the world. I want to be a part of it. So I Which, moved. Wait, hold on a second though, but so did everybody. No, yeah. <laughs> like <laughs> like who didn't want to go? God, I want to have sex with all these hot chicks. Yeah, but I got in my car, drove to California, worked in auto parts for two years figured out who who the agent was that would could get you into that business and I got myself in that business. Oh, and and like was there an audition? Like no, and, and since you're completely well, yeah. you, okay. are you are you are you bisexual or you're completely straight? Uh I'm pretty straight. Okay. I don't know. You're you're kind of cute. I'm I might, you know, I I, I might mean, tumble with you, but you know. No, no, but like but you know like <laughs> here's 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 my deal. Like you know, like, I've had this conversation with a very dear friend of mine over the years. And mm -hmm. he owned the restaurant that I worked at, and uh, we wanted to becoming best friends. And I just came back from watching a movie, and um, it was like um, a girl with two guys. And there were certain situations where it was kind of like, you know, things were touching. Mm -hmm. And I had a, a very adamant, like I said, I I'm sorry, but I think if those two things touch, that you're gay. And he yeah. immediately, he immediately, he, he immediately yeah. went. Kind of no, it's no, it's not. Yeah. Any kind of homosexual panic, you can't be in porn because you're you're rubbing chubs all the time. Yeah, yeah. I no, mean, it, it was it was it was it was more of a fun sort of debate, you know, because his response really quickly was no, it's not, and I was like, oh, oh, <laughs> what did you just do? And uh, he like sort of uh, and so now we kind of have this thing where every time we see each other, we go like this. And uh, it's sort of our little like uh, 
what's up? How you doing? <laughs> it's basically, you know, two things touching is, uh, right. You know, but, um, so you got to have a little, I'm not that guy. I, 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 I was involved in something like that with the two girl, one guy, two, one girl, two guy thing once. And I ran out of the room. I, I just, I am, I am that straight that I just really couldn't handle someone else's junk in the room while I was there. Yeah, well, yeah, you, you wouldn't make in the porn industry. Then. No, uh, but I have no problem with multiple women in the room. I'm good yeah. with that. Right. <laughs> but what about and, a camera crew? Um, a guy holding a light. An all, an all girl camera crew? Sure. No, 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 no way, pal. <laughs> yeah, I know. So um, you have to have some, uh, you know, unfilter there. And I, I understand that. But, you know, um, you uh, were, I think you guys were dating. You were also dating Ginger Lynn. I never, no, Ginger and I never dated. We banged around off camera a few times, but I mean, we never dated. Yeah. Did, did you, yeah. Do you do that? Do you like have like a, like you, you meet someone on set and you guys really kind of hit it off and you guys go, hey, you want to meet for dinner and do this later oh, yeah. off camera? Oh, yeah. 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 All the time. Because, oh, by the way, I was just on the phone before this with uh, Randy West. He said hello. Um, oh, Ed. Yeah. He said he wanted, he, he, was, uh, he spoke nothing, but uh, he's, he's, you know, he spoke very highly of you. So. No, Randy is a good guy. I used to buy pot from him. <laughs> yeah. We used, to, we used to go bowling. Yeah. So uh, it's funny because, you know, I I, 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 I shouldn't probably talk about this, but uh, there was a situation where I first met him when I was with somebody. And I always said, if it was going to be someone that was going to let you do that, it would be Randy or Bill Clinton. And then all of a sudden I walk into a party and then there's Randy. And I was like, uh, never mind. <laughs> so what, well, but we wound up becoming good friends with him, but me and my friend that were his friends, which still are, um, we, we, we kind of like, we got retired Randy. We we're like, damn. <laughs> Cause he's just basically like about going golfing and just chilling out. Oh yeah. And, and uh, not, not nineties maniac Randy. <laughs> no, we're all, we're all, we're all of that age now, man. I'm, you know, I mean, I'm I'm actually I have a a pork roast like chilling in the uh, slow cooker right now, and yeah. that you know that's gonna be like the highlight of my fucking day. Yeah, <laughs> you know, into that pork roast and about uh, take picture, was- send me pictures, Tommy. I want to see it. All right, <laughs> I'm very I'm very curious about your pork roast. <laughs> uh, no, seriously, I, I'm I'm a, I'm a I'm a bit of a home chef myself. I like to oh, cook. Man. Yeah, yeah, I'm a I'm a great cook. Yeah. So now I know Randy uh, uh, had, you know, the up and comers money and stuff like that. How's your situation? What's going on? What do you I mean? mean? Were, were you able to save off of that or were you like a maniac and ran through it? How yeah. did you, did you make, would you make like six figures doing what you were doing? You know, oh, like, yeah, no, I made millions over the years. I had, you know, I had a company that was making millions and, you know, the, the internet kind of fucked everything up. But right now I'm working on a book. And the book is going to be in my uh, my retirement uh, fund. Okay. Uh, no, I, obviously, uh, do you have a title yet? Do you have any? Uh, no. Well, we have a title. Uh, um, is Mike Sager is, is working on it with me? And if, if you look up Mike Sager, the Google Mike Sager, the guy, basically the guy uh, wrote a story in Rolling Stone, and the movies Boogie Nights and Wonderland were both based on his writings. Okay. He, he's helped me put the book together, and it's it's going to be really good. I mean, but we're not done with it yet. We'll probably be done with it uh, sometime next year, and we'll have a title and all that. Well, you know you'll be wel- welcome to come on my show and promote it, that's for sure. Cool. Yeah, so um, so going back to Ron, uh, uh, I- I- ex- explain, like, wh- wh- how does it get – well, what do you know as far as like someone in the industry? I'm sure you must still talk to people in the industry. Are they going, finally, he's getting his comeuppance? Or they're going, oh, poor, poor Ron. Well, let's, let's put it. I don't think anyone's really surprised uh, at you know him getting all of this flack. I think people are probably surprised that he's being held criminally liable and facing 250 years in jail. I mean, I actually feel bad for the guy. I mean, I you well, know, anybody that if, if 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 20 women come and just say 10. Are real. I, I don't feel bad for anybody. Uh, if you yeah. forget, if you raped a woman, what if, we, if you raped one woman, uh, uh, you should be in jail. There's no doubt. Yeah. Like like yeah. it just yeah. I guess like it's not something you do to someone. You, you don't force yourself on someone that doesn't want it. 
Yeah. I don't know. I don't understand. It's like I mean, it's yeah, not, why did you, he just never learned how to take no for an answer. You know what I mean? No means no. To Ronnie, no means uh, you know. Let me let me whine and complain, and eventually they'll give in. Yeah, but that, but that's not rape. Rape but is when not, when when you know if yeah, you annoy some you I, annoy I, someone I, I, to have I, sex. Like, you know, uh, you know, attack some woman, hold her down, and and force it. You, you know, like you, what you picture a rapist is. Yeah. You know but that I don't see. I I see Ronnie is just a very just. Uh, like, like, I mean, he doesn't stop. You know what I'm saying? He 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 doesn't he de- he doesn't have a clue about you know when when it's time to like you know pull the brakes. Yeah. Well, he doesn't know what the word no means. Is that yeah, what you're saying? Exactly. Okay. So yeah, when when a woman says no, that's it. Yeah. So uh, you know I okay. So like I'm just you know I just I don't see him as a physical person, uh, and I'm not saying he can't be. Just because I just you know see an out of shape older man. Right. Um, so, but I, you know, I, I, you know, I can't, I, every time I've known him, he's always been jovial and like, oh, happy, yeah. you know? That's, yeah. That's his persona. I mean, he's, you know, I, like I said, I, I like the guy, but I've also been in very uncomfortable situations where we've been on set and, you know, the girl is like not into him and he's like, like I said, he, he, he doesn't know when to say no. He, 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 Kind of whines and complains and until he gets his way, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, because I don't, you know, not, I don't, not in a violent way, in a in a just annoying, you know, pushy way. Yeah, I never like if, if the other person isn't really into it as much as I am, like not even as much. If they're not into it, I you know, and they're doing me a favor, it's just sort of yeah, like that's a turn off. Exactly, I'm the, I'm the same way. I mean, I, I basically a girl has to make a first move on me. I'm not the guy that, you know, will, I mean, if a girl shows any, like, hesitation whatsoever, I'm like, I'm, I'm turned off. Yeah. It doesn't work for me. But, uh, but I, I doubt that that happens to you. Like, you know, A, you're a handsome guy, B, you're a legend, and, and C, you, you have a nice penis, and everybody knows about it. Yeah, but, you know, well, like I said, I, I, I'm, still, I'm still laid back. I'm still that shy kid from Texas that, you know, Look, looks at a beautiful woman and worships her, and it's like if if I if she doesn't come on to me, I don't have the fucking balls to come on to her. You know? Wow. What I'm huh? So, yeah. um, did you ever fall in love with anybody on set? Oh uh, yeah, I mean, love whatever that is. You know, I I had intense, you know, moments of passion. I mean, tr- you know, Tracy Lords. I mean, we went out. You know, uh, yeah, she was the first one I've ever seen on, uh, on camera, and um, this is like you know a friend of a friend when I was eleven. I she, thought she, I was in love with her. I, you know, Jill Kelly. We. Went oh my god! I, I love Jill Kelly. Yeah. Not like love, but like, we like a few times, and I, you know, I, I kind of fell hard for her, and uh, I mean, yeah, there's a, there's a few over the years, you know. Yeah, I did. I'm pretty happy with like my current situation where. It just like we're just um. Who are your I, favorite uh, girls in porn? Who what's on? Uh, okay, okay, well, Jill Kelly being yeah, one of them. Jill, Jill Kelly. I was never into um, I was never into uh, what you call it? You know, Jenna Jameson. Like, like I, I yeah. like, when she first came on the show, I was like, she's cute. Yeah. You know, I didn't yeah, see. I, I, I see where you're coming from. I mean, I, I like Jenna, but yeah, I wasn't. She, I wasn't like that attracted to her it's like no. yeah she's cute but it's i i thought i always thought jill was like beautiful i i also what's wrong janine linda mueller janine like, Lind- I, 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 always thought, I thought she should have been a, a model not in porn oh, but yeah. i i appreciated it anyway <laughs> yeah not not, a, not, a, not Tara, tattoos yeah but, uh, well but i'm talking about pre-tattoos like oh, when, she, tattoos. When, she, when she came on howard she was not tattooed oh, um yeah. So, but I, I again, look at me. Um, I, I kind of like the tattoos. So, oh, I mean, yeah, but you're a man. Yeah, you know, you know come on. So, uh, anyway, um, the who else was there? Uh, I, you know, J- Ginger Lynn was always like adorable, tiny Ginger, little thing. Yeah. You know, Ginger, back in the day when she, I was, I was like the second guy she ever worked with in the business. Wow. Who, who was the first guy? Um, oh, Ron yeah. Jeremy. Oh, fuck. exactly. <laughs> she, was ready, she was ready to quit the business after her first scene. And then she, 
me and we worked together and she decided to stick around. Because so, of him? Yeah. So America, you have me to thank for Ginger Lynn. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. All right. So, yeah. So, and uh, so uh, who else? Um, Tara Patrick, she always thought she was beautiful. Yeah, we um, went on a couple of dates. Yeah, she, uh, she actually married a, a kid. I, uh, yeah, I grew up with Evan in Canarsie. Yeah, Oz. Yeah, Oz, yeah, no. Evan, Evan's a maniac, biohazard. So, yeah. um, but you know, there's just like, what do you think of now? Like, like, do you go on Pornhub or do you go to you? Like, I don't know. I, you know, just Pornhub seems easy enough to me. But you can find, you you can watch a porn for two hours and never see the same person twice. You yeah. can see a, a two hour marathon of incredibly you know, hot you, girls doing. You know, I think it's cute and porn. Um, who's in it now? I never worked with her either. I never even met her. Uh, Jada Stevens. I'd have to have look that one up. She's an amazing ass. Oh, really? Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm all about the butt. So There's another girl, uh, Chia Durza, I really like. She's cute. Who is, who is the, the one that blew your mind on set where you were like, um, I can't hold back? Oh, there's so many. Jeez. Really? Yeah. Ja you know what? Jamie Summers was pretty, pretty cute. I mean, we actually hung out. Um, but she had amazing pussy. I mean, you, you, know, you, know, you gotta be. You gotta, I, I, you, I, we'll, 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 we'll figure that out. But I'm just saying, as much as I can talk, to, I can talk to talk. On this show, or is this a PG show? No, it's 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 a YouTube show, and you, oh, okay. uh, it's 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 on YouTube, and you have to like. There, okay. there, 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 there's, there's a, yeah. No, it's it's. Listen, I, I'm, I'm. This is the most amazing I've ever been. Where I'm not cursing, and I'm not saying filthy words, or filthy. And I'm sort of doing what Howard used to do: is having to. Give you the idea in your head without having to actually say right. it. Okay. Yeah. Well, I so, don't worry about. It. Yeah, no, it's okay. Um, that's uh, this is why my producer said. I said, let's go live. It's Thursday, eight o'clock. I said six o'clock, and he's like, "What are you talking about tonight?" I went, "Uh," he goes, "You're not going live." <laughs> so, um, but uh, of course, I it's, it's always always listen to Noah is uh, being tattooed on my forearm next week. <laughs> so, um, but it's uh. So you, when you go on, when, when you're, you're home alone and you're having, uh, you know, you got an itch to scratch, do you go to Pornhub or are you more of someone that thinks it up in their head? Um, uh, I don't know. I uh, my, my sex drive is over. I'm, dude, I'm almost 60 years old. You know, to me, a pork roast is more enticing than a fucking... <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, at this point in my life. Oh, wow. So now you were pre-Viagra. So... Um, how did that work? Do you just like you just have to be like a viral stud? Is that how it? Uh, you, yeah, you had to, yeah, that and smoking a joint before a scene. Yeah, that was our our Viagra pre Viagra. Really, that got you going. Yeah, and I'll, I'll I'll say this: Viagra kept me in the game for at least ten years after my due date. Yeah. Oh huh. hell yeah! Because yeah. uh, well, I guess it helps if you got you distracted or something like that. I. Oh, hey. I, I, I've, I've only taken half of one once uh -huh. and it was um, because, um, you know, there was more than one person involved and I thought it was going to be a marathon and then it turned out to be, okay, there was no round two. Right. And all of a sudden I was stuck with, you know, <laughs> and, and, you know, I was like, no, we got to, she has to go pick up a daughter. I'm going to the gym. I'm like, son yeah, of a bitch. <laughs> that was awesome, man. Yeah. Um, I just, dude, I, I think I have a problem. I'm turning 48 next week and, uh, yeah. Um, I'm yeah. good. I'm not saying it's going to change, man. I know. Oh, you're, I don't. Fine. No, you're fine now. I was good at 48. Yeah. You hit your 50s. You start hitting the mid 50s. It's it's all downhill, man. You're, you know. Yeah. Um, like, I'm 50. What am I? 59 now. Yeah. I'm uh, I'm done. It's all uh, over. I, I I I you're breaking my heart here, Tom. Yeah. <laughs> you can't. You're a legend. You can't do that. All right. But um, did you like? You can go on. Pornhub and type your name in and see a bunch of your old shit and you don't see any of that money. No, you can't. You can't stop the, your your image being used. It's no. It's never been set up that way. You know, porn. No, was, it, you know, porn was always a disposable commodity. It was you know quasi legal for for years. You know, run by the mob. I mean, it, it was just like uh, the system was never set up for residuals or royalties or anything like that. So. You know, it is what it is. You know, I had a good time. I'm not going to complain. Oh, I should be paid for all that. Yeah, fuck it. 
Well, I know because it's just every like it's search engines. Just you know, uh, they uh, they find everything, and you know, oh, nothing okay. you can do to track everything that's going on when people the monetize my move. memories. That's that's you know, yeah. that's the future. What's the future? I'm gonna monetize my memories. There you go. Absolutely, I think there should be a Tom Byron movie. Well. Let's just say we're working on it. Okay. Uh, all right. Now, so, oh, well, that would make sense. The man who's writing your book is uh, very influential uh, in making movies like that. What did you think of, um, uh, like, Boogie Nights and stuff like that? Were you like, that's me? Or like, who who was that technically loosely based on? You know, like, a lot of people claim it was me, it was me, it was me. Um, I, I don't think it was based. It, it was sort of, like, I guess, based on John, John Holmes. Yeah. You know, like the trajectory of his life but i mean the, the character was actually based on several people including myself yeah you know um, you look at the haircut look at my you know my yeah. back in the 80s i mean it's pretty it's pretty close yeah you know, i think it was a kind of a mishmash of different uh people cool was, no i i, I but yeah. like everybody claims like there's a whole i forget who it was there's a couple people claimed that was me that was me yeah I I don't come I don't claim that any of it is anybody. Yeah, but, you know it was an entertaining movie. Yeah, I think it was a I was I liked the movie. Um, I just think that director was very pretentious because it should have been edited down at least forty minutes. Like it wasn't too long. I don't no, I don't think so. I like it. Yeah, Jamie no. Gillis hated it. The late Jamie Gillis hated it. Yeah, the, they did a sequence where they uh, Jack uh, Jack Horner went in the uh, limo. And he was doing like a little thing with a camera and doing an interview, and then uh, he ended up beating up the uh, the guy who came into the limo. And that uh, Jamie Jamie Cole thought that character was based on him because he, he did something very similar, except he didn't beat any, anybody up. And he thought they they kind of uh, they crapped on his little you know pr his project. Yeah, he didn't like the movie, but I I enjoyed it. I I liked it. Oh, it was great performances. Julia Moore, I just, I just, I'm a sucker for redhead, so she just like does it for me at any, any time. And Heather Graham too. She's another yeah. beautiful woman. It was fun to see them naked. Yeah. Oh, always. Yeah. So, all right. So we're gonna keep this a little short tonight because uh, uh, more people watch shorter shows, I guess. Because I babble on, Tom. I got a problem. Yeah. <laughs> I got a pork roast. You got a pork roast to to, to make sweet love to. <laughs> so I, I, you, are you currently are you uh you're on your own you're dating somebody what, no. what's up no working on the book man yeah that's it I, I run around during the day hustle you know make make a dollar and work on the book that's my life yeah and you're 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 all the way upstate new york right now right yeah so you're, you're in the boonies yeah you know outside rochester yeah you know up in the farm country well if you feel that if you, if you want to one day, uh, after all this bizarre world we live in uh, turns around, you're more than welcome to come down and hang out in the city. We'll go out to dinner one night or something. 100%. Yeah, I love New York City. I've been there yeah. many times. Love so, it. Out. Yeah. No, uh, it's my backyard, and I love it, although it's a shithole right now. Yeah, that's what I hear. Yeah, but, uh, you LA. know. That's why I left. Yeah. Yeah, I, L.A. is, I, I don't even know what's going on out there. It's just, it's, uh, I don't know what's going on anywhere, to be honest with you. There's a lot of weird dis misinformation all over the board it's it uh it, i don't know it's gonna I, come november i think this this world's gonna be a scary place yeah well we'll see you know I I, 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 it bothers me man i'm just i'm in my own little world working on my working on my memoir my mem you got this what am i trying to say memoir there you go all right yeah so all right well yo and so the bottom line is you know yeah you're not you're not surprised at this whole Ron Jeremy situation. I'm not surprised, and I and I actually, I don't know. I I wish the best for him and also all the people that accused him. Uh, but I don't know. I just I don't. Know. I, I I wish he had like listened to me over the years. Yeah. That's all I gotta say, you know. Yeah. Yep. And uh, you, we'll, we'll end up with the, your your. your uh, Here's another one of the questions I wanted to ask. What about celebrities? Are there celebrities like, did you like go out and all of a sudden you see like a movie star that you're like, oh, and they come over to you and go, I watch your shit all the time. Like, do you uh, have a cool story like that? Yeah, I mean, let's see. Let's see. Uh, oh, Richard Dreyfus. I was at a trade show and Richard Dreyfus, like, and 
came up to my booth and we had like a 45 minute conversation. The guy, the guy is like a student of pornography. He was interesting from movies that I had done 20 years ago and I forgot all about all about him. Richard Driver is a huge fan of porn. Wow. Uh, what about Bob? <laughs> he don't like I guess know, we know I about that movie. I like that movie. He he has heat with uh, Bill Murray. He had yeah, uh, Bill Murray on that film. No, no, that's one of my favorite movies of all time. I love it too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he had heat with Bill Murray. Yeah. So, and um, what about uh, who else? Like, so, Richard Dreyfus. Um, did, did any big celebrity females come on to you or something like that and want to go throw down? You know what? When I was doing the movie 52 Pickup back in 1985, you remember Vanity? Vanity from Prince? Oh, Prince, yeah. Yeah. She was in the movie and we were we shot uh, two nights on set and she was coming on to me hard. But I was too too big of a dork to fucking pick up on it. You know, close the deal. I have the same story with Punky Brewster. Yeah? Yeah. Exactly. She 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 was a fan of the show and she'd call in in the morning and then um and then she came to New York and then we, we went rollerblading and then we were in my apartment and I did not what know what I was doing. <laughs> I, I I probably could have, and I didn't. I didn't. I didn't pull the trigger. I, I had a really hard time. Oh, yeah. I, I, I I totally could have with vanity, but I didn't pull the trigger. Oh, oh, it, 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 was it that the biggest regret you have as far as uh somebody like that? I don't. I don't know. I'm trying to think. I mean, I've ran across. Let's see. Richard Driver is the biggest porno van, but I mean, I you know a lot of people that I've met and they've they've recognized me too. Like I saw Her Herbie Hancock once at a. Uh, at a, an award show, and he goes, Herbie, wow, I'm a big fan. He goes, yeah, I'm a big fan of yours, too. You know, That's awesome. kind of that kind of thing. You know, you run into people, and, and and it's funny, like a lot of mainstream celebrities, it's like this, they, they, they recognize me, too, and it kind of blows my mind. Yeah. No, it kind of blew my mind because I, I first met you at the AVN Awards mm -hmm. uh, a couple years back, and there was an incident that happened, like, a couple of hours before where – um. Uh, a friend of a friend that we were hanging out with the night before met up with another friend and disappeared. And I found out uh, about an hour before I hit that red carpet that that person OD'd and was dead. Oh, yeah. 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 Uh, and so that, that was like the last interview thing I did for Howard. And nobody knew what happened like an hour before I hit that red carpet because I did a miserable job because I was literally in shock. Uh -huh. But I, I do specifically – remember meeting you and then you do who I was, which is kind yeah, of like yeah. almost the same thing, you know? Because I used to watch the uh, the, the, the Stern show on E! all the time. Yeah. And no, I mean, it's, you know, there was a thing where you, you were going to, they were going to shave your head and you didn't want to. Because yeah. You had, like things on your head or something. No, or, I, had, I had transplants. Oh. I had, yeah, a hair transplants. Yeah. You still all, got the scars you in the back. All, yeah. You were all wigged out about getting your head shaved or something. Yeah. That was a day that changed everything. Um, yeah. I, I, I watched that and I'm like, I don't remember being there at all. Like I went, I went blank. Well, you know, it's like, you're, everybody's got like their, what, like when I was a kid, I was like, Oh God, if I lose, start losing my hair, forget about it. Yeah. Cause I always thought your hair was so important if you wanted to get laid, you know? So, yeah. and all of a sudden I started losing my hair and having anxiety. And then I was started losing my hair and Howard picked up on that. I was being made fun of in front of 20 million people on a daily basis for it. It wasn't a good situation for me at the time. Yeah, I don't know. I've been lucky. I guess my, my you know, I still you've been, got you've, hair. You're, you've been lucky in a lot of different ways, Tom. Yeah. <laughs> God's blessed you. I No, I got to agree with you on that. It yeah. has been a wonderful life. When's, when's the last time you got recognized? I don't know. People come in, you know, sometimes people come into the restaurant and they recognize me. Yeah. You know. Yeah, but that, that that must be a weird transition if you're like, say, someone of my age and then you're with your family and they, they see you at the restaurant. And like, oh my God. Nothing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, you know, it happens. You know, oh, come meet the kids. <laughs> you know how many times I, I whacked off to this guy, kids? <laughs> Yeah, it happens. <laughs> yeah. All right. Doing? All right, man. I'm going to let you uh, take send me pictures of the roast. I'm very curious at your culinary art skills. You got it. All right. And thank you so much for coming on. I appreciate you. And uh, hope you and your family are safe and stay safe in this bizarre, bizarre world we live in. Back at you. All right, Tom. Thanks. Thank you.